Suppose we wanted to determine whether this below series converges or diverges, and if it does converge, to what value. But first, let's consider um, a little bit simpler of a series. Let's consider the series of 2 times 1.1 quantity to the n minus 1. Well, we can evaluate this series pretty, pretty easily because if we take that, uh, the sequence in the middle and we take the limit of that as n approaches infinity, so we have this as our sequence here, and we take the limit of this sequence as n approaches infinity, this goes to infinity because that 1.1, when you, when you keep increasing n, that's just going to get bigger and bigger. To see that graphically, we could uh, take a look at it in Desmos. And here I've got something going where um, this, is j this is just um, the sequence of 2 times r to the n minus 1, where in this case a is 2 and r is 1.1. And you can see our first term there is is shown here in blue. And this is our second term. It's just going to be 10% bigger than that first term. And if we keep on increasing um, higher n values, you can see that this is just going to increase by 10% each time. It's just going to get bigger and bigger. So if the limit, if this sequence here, these, these different terms in the sequence are getting bigger and bigger, then the sum of these is definitely going to um, get bigger and bigger. And we can appeal to our test for divergence. So the series will diverge by the test for divergence since the sequence goes to infinity as n goes to infinity. So this would be sort of, this would be a, um, a good way to sort of communicate that as as boxed in red here. Now um, let's look at another one too while we're at it. Before we get to the before we get to the one shown up here, let's consider where our r value is one in this case. So consider this series. We can actually can still apply that same test for divergence. We can look at the limit of this sequence, which is right here, as n goes to infinity. And we find that's just going to be 2. Now we can look at this graphically again, um, just like we did before, since we're in the habit of doing it. Let's go ahead and look at it again. And so this case, you can see when n equals 1, this is our a sub n, our a sub 1 value right here. This is just um, 2. And we go ahead and increase that to 2, our next term and 3, and 4, and 5. It's just pretty boring sequence, right? These are all going to be 1's, because 1 to, to um, any n value is going to be j just 1. Um, what we can also show here is we can just plot out what that the partial sums are. So let's go ahead and plot those as well. And you can see this is my term for partial sums. It's these, each of the, the partial sums are going to increase incrementally because each time you're adding one. So the limit of these partial sums is actually this whole series here. As, um, as n goes to infinity, you're going to keep adding each of these terms in the sequence and that's just going to keep exploding. So obviously since this um, limit of the sequence equals two, it does not equal zero and therefore we know by the test for divergence that the series will diverge. All right, now let's get to the actual question we're, we're trying to figure out here this particular sequence. So if we take the limit of this sequence here as n approaches infinity, you can imagine that that's just going to go to zero because each time you increase this n value here, you're going to multiply by 0.9, which is going to decrease the value by 10% each time, which um, is gonna eventually going to lead you to zero. So our test for divergence, unfortunately, it doesn't tell us anything in this case. When that limit goes to zero, our test for divergence doesn't work, so we got to um, appeal to um, different types of tests. But to get there, we first need to just start with sort of a, let's just start with a sort of a generic type of geometric series. So in this case, I've just replaced those terms with a and r, where um, this is sort of the standard um, nomenclature for a geometric series. And our a, we're just going to call that our first term. And that r is going to be our common ratio, which is the ratio between neighboring terms in the sequence. So if we, we can actually manipulate this a bit and we can actually um, find any partial sum value. So it's, it's, it's pretty neat and it's pretty unique to geometric series. It's, this is the only type of series where we can actually um, find a simple formula for these partial sums. So we could go ahead and expand this summation and you're going to end up with something like this where um, as I incrementally increases you're going to get that R raised to different powers, and, you're, and the summation is just going to be the addition of all those until we get to our n value, or um, or r to the n minus one because we have i to the we have r to the i minus one over here. 
So now bear with me for a second, and let's just suppose we wanted to find r times s sub n. We're just going to multiply each term by r. Imagine if you multiply this term by r, you're just going to get this term. And if you multiply this term up here by r, you're going to get that term. So we just kind of scooted this over a little bit. Um, basically the same thing, just a little shifted. Now, um, now keep bearing with me here, and let's just imagine that we wanted to take this top term minus this bottom term. So we're going to take s sub n up here minus r times s sub n down here. And let's just kind of do this one at a time. So over here, we can subtract these terms individually. And now up here we have this a, and you can imagine down here we can add we can add zero to this because that doesn't change anything, right? So it's a valid move. And now we can we're trying to subtract r times s sub n from s sub n, so we can subtract zero from a, and we're going to get our first um, term in for to add here, and it's just going to be a. And now you can see these next terms are actually going to cancel out. When we subtract these, they're going to equal zero. So we're going to this is going to um, equate to zero. This next one will be zero. That one will be zero. That one will be zero. This one will be zero st still, and then we get finally get to this last term, and you could just throw in a plus zero over here because um, that doesn't change our equation at all. And imagine we're going to subtract this term right here from this zero, so we're going to get a minus a times r to the n. So we're getting pretty close here now. So bear with me, um, a little just a little bit longer. Now, if we want to simplify this side a little bit, we're really trying to solve for s of n, that partial sum term. So we can kind of pull that out. Well, let's, so let's factor that out and call that s of n times 1 minus r. And over here, we can just simplify and kind of cancel out all these zeros. And we're just left with a minus a times r to the n. Now, all we need to do is divide by 1 minus r on both sides. And we get our finally a value for s sub n. And if we want to simplify this a little bit, we can factor out this these a's up here. And we can get with our final solution here where s sub n is going to equal a times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. Now this is um, actually pretty unique because we're actually, we can solve for any any partial sum value, any n term, we can we can find that partial sum and this it only works for a geometric series. So it's pretty convenient and we can go ahead and try and apply it to our series that we're, we're trying to find. So back to our question and um, before we get too far along, let's just go ahead and and do a, a bit of a test on that partial sum formula that we found. So imagine we want to find s of 4. So s of 4 is going to be the summation of the first four terms in this sequence. So it's going to be um, 2, because we can just pull that a out times the first term, plus the second term, plus the third term, plus the fourth term, which is going to equal approximately 6.878 if you add those up. Now let's go ahead and test out that formula we just had, where um, our a in this case is going to be this 2 right here, and our r is going to be this 0 0.9. So we can just throw in that formula we just discovered. And now we can go ahead and plug in for a and plug in for these r values and plug in um, 4 for this n value. So we get these terms here, which, if you calculate this out, ends up being 6.878. So it's the same as this one up here. So we know that this um, formula, we're actually on the, we're on the right track because it matches when we, when we actually expand the summation and, and calculate it in a um, more tedious manner up here. So it's good. So we're checked out. So now, now we, can, um, we can work a little bit more with this formula now that we have some confidence in it. So what we're, we're, we're not really looking for S of 4. We're really looking for, for the, 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 the last partial sum or when that you're, you're going all the way up to infinity adding all those terms. So we can actually use that same formula um, by applying limits, and we can actually discover what that value is. So remember, our a was 2 and our r was 0 0.9. So now if we want to find s, and s is the, we've got a capital S here, meaning it's, the, it's, the, it's this whole series, or the sum of all the terms in the sequence here. That is going to be the same thing as this partial sum, or the limit of this partial sum as n approaches infinity. So we're going to keep that limit here, and we can keep that same formula here for s of n. And now, instead of plugging in an actual n value, we're just going to take the limit as that goes to infinity. So let's go ahead and plug in those, um, those same numbers that we plugged in before for a and r. But n, in this case, we're going to make that go to infinity. And you can imagine, as that n goes to infinity, that term on the top is going to go to 0. So we just end up with this which um, simplifies down to just 20. 
So um, maybe a little surprising, but this if you take the, the sum of all the terms in this sequence as it goes off to infinity, it reaches this um, whole number here of 20. But um, don't take my word for it. Let's go ahead and, and try and, um, and do some numerical calculations to, to see if this uh, looks legitimate. So we can go back to Desmos here, and we've um, changed our A value to 2. Our art is 0 0.9 now. And you can see our first data point here is um is just going to be two because um when n equals one we have r to the one minus one is zero r which is zero so we just have a which is two but when we get our second term here it's going to be a bit less because we're going to multiply by zero point nine and it's they're going to get they're going to keep decreasing right they're going to keep getting less and less multiplied by zero point nine each time as you would expect for the series. So that's what happens with the, the sequence, the terms in the sequence. But we have that, this this um, formula here also for the terms in the series. And you can see what happen is happening to these terms in the series, these partial sums. So this would be the first partial sum, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth. And you can see as we get we start getting further out here, we're getting something that's actually looks like it's heading close to 20. So this is like sort of a, a good visual or numerical or graphical indication that this 20 right here is actually um, on the right track. So um, I think we can claim victory now with our answer here, but let's just sort of summarize um, what we've shown. So up here we have our sort of generic geometric series formula. And down here, let's just consider this as sort of a number line for R. R being, of course, this term in here. And in the case that we were looking at is 0 0.9. Um, but in the first case we looked at, our R value was 1.1. And in that case, if you remember, we found that that series diverged. And then we also looked at where R equaled, equaled 1, and we found that we found that the limit of that sequence went to 1, which is not equal to 0, so we found that that also diverged. And lastly, we looked at r equals 0 0.9, shown by this um, blue line here, and we found that that actually converged um, specifically to 20 in this case. So what we can say sort of generally about a geometric series that's in this exact sort of uh, formulation here, that that series will converge if the absolute value of r is less than 1. And we didn't talk about r being negative 1, but um, that, that this turns out to be true. Um, you could imagine it would also converge when a equals 0, but that's not a very exciting type of series. So the, the main thing that we're going to um, want to know is that if the absolute value of r is less than 1, then this geometric series will converge. And it, not only will it converge, but we can actually know what it's going to converge to, which is very unique to geometric series. So what this basically means, if you want to think of it graphically, is we sort of discovered what we might call an interval of convergence. So when r is between negative 1 and 1, we know that the geometric series is going to converge. When it's outside of that region, we know it's going to diverge. So um, lastly, we can say that this series will diverge if the absolute value of r is greater than or equal to 1. So this is geometric series. It's a very commonly used type of series. And I um, hope this helped just giving an initial introduction to it.